Look at example six. Uh, 3x plus 4 does not match 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. So we have uh, uncommon denominators here. It says find the sum of, so we're adding them together. So if we take a look at the denominators, can everybody see that 3x plus 4 is as simple as it can get? It can't be factored. There's no powers in it. So there's no factoring to be done there. But it is going to be acting as one object on its own. So 3x plus 4 is the factored form of 3x plus 4. Uh, 6x squared plus 5x minus 4 is a quadratic trinomial with a lead coefficient that is not 1. So that 6x squared means that we have a different way of doing this problem, which again we should be getting better at, but for some of us are still struggling a little bit at this. Stuff. So I've got 6 times negative 4. I want factors of negative 24. And I want the sum of those factors to be positive 5. The sum is whatever that number is. Okay, officially, 20, negative 24x squared, but we'll just look to negative 24 there. So, two numbers multiply to make negative 24, so the signs are different. They're going to be adding, different sign adding is actually subtracting, to make positive 5. So, um, positive 8 and negative 3 will do the trick. 8 times 3, of course, is 24. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. When you add 8 and negative 3, you get positive 5 because the signs are different and each bigger. And if you recall, what we do with these two numbers is that's the breakdown of this middle term. So 6x squared stays the same. Negative 4 stays the same. And I'm going to split net positive 5x into positive 8x and negative 3x. Order does matter a little bit. I'm going to put minus 3x here and plus 8x there. So my third slot term, 8x, is positive. So if you have an option of that third term being positive, it's helpful. If they're, both numbers are negative here, there's no option there. You just got to put them where they are. But when there is a positive available, you have to put it in that slot. Once I've broken this middle term into these two terms, so again, this expression is equivalent to this because these two things add up to 5x. It's just a breakdown of it. First two and the second two group with the plus in the middle. Plus in the middle makes it easier. Minus in the middle, you have to do some sign changing to fix it. Common factor of 3x in the first group. If you take 3x out of 6x squared, you get 2x. Take 3x out of 3x, you get minus 1. Second group, common factor is 4. Take a 4 out. 8x divided by 4 is 2x. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And the factor by grouping works when the parentheses match, which they do. So 2x minus 1 is one factor. 3x plus 4 is the other factor. So I've got the factored forms of both the top of the first and the second fractions. The first fraction, the factored form is 3x plus 4. The second fraction, the factored form is 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 4, which means the least common multiple of this thing is going to be 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 4. And that's the first power, that's the first power, that's the first power. Everything's the first power, so it's just the product of those two pieces. These, of course, 3x plus 4 and 3x plus 4 match, and we write it down one time. So I simply want both denominators to be 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 4. My problem says find the sum of, sum means to add. So I'm going to get 2x over 3x plus 4, leaving some gap here. Plus, I've got 4x squared minus 11x minus 12 over 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 4. Again, this factored is this. Once I've written the problem out with the denominators in factored form, now it's inventory time. What do I have? What do I want? What's missing? So, I have 3x plus 4. I want 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 4. What's missing? 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1 is missing, so I'm going to put 2x minus 1 on the bottom because I want it to be there. i got to put a 2x minus 1 as a consequence on top. You do what you want to the bottom, the top has to have the same thing happen to it. The second fraction, this is what I have, this is what I want. What's missing? Nothing. Nothing's missing, right? So that's fine. That fraction already has the common denominator on it. Right? So, this is good. This is good. We're ready to go now. I do need to do a distributive property on this. I'm only adding this expression up here, so, and that's already 
simplify it out so all is good there. So altogether, the first fraction's numerator is 4x squared minus 2x. The second fraction's numerator, we're going to be adding 4x squared, adding negative 11x, and adding negative 12. All that goes over the denominator, which notice is simply going to be 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. Again, this is the factored form of that. That's what that is. So again, I've already broken it down. I don't have to multiply it back together to figure out what it used to be, right? So that's what it used to be. That's what it is. All that's left then is combined like terms on top. 4x squared and 4x squared are both positive make 8x squared. Uh, negative 2x and negative 11x, both negative, add to make negative 13x. And then I've got, of course, minus 12 all by itself, no other constants on top, all over 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. If you look at the domain, x is not allowed to equal what number? So again, if I go back to my factored form here, I know that 3x plus 4 can't equal 0, which means 3x can't equal what? Who the 4 overcomes? Negative 4. Negative 4, and then divide by? 3. 3. So x can't equal negative 4 thirds. And 2x minus 1 can't equal 0. So again, move the 1 over, it becomes 2x cannot equal? Negative 1 half. Er. So 1 moves over, it's negative, becomes? Positive. Positive 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, positive 1 half. So again, once you get your common denominator established, just set each factor equal to zero and say x cannot equal those numbers to establish the domain of each of these things.